afternoon, everyone. Um, I recently joined the, the, uh, the study team of Professor Su Li Wang, and uh, this, uh, this day, uh, today I be on behalf of the study team of Su Li Wang's laboratories. I'm Chen Liu. Um, uh, it's my pleasure to be here to share our recent work that is about That is about the association of maternal urine levels of phthalate metabolites with newborn sex hormones. Um, um, phthalate esters, also known as phthalate, um, is then used um, as solvents or plasticizers to soften uh, plastics, many as uh, PVC. Uh, nowadays, it exists ubiquitously in our uh, environment. The major source includes food. The food is the, the large the major source, and personal care products. Products with fragrances, cause and sealants, adhesives, uh, interior design materials, and etc. Once the phthalate uh, enters our body, it, uh, it will be hydrolyzed into monoesters, and monoesters uh, is subsequently modified by various oxidation reactions, and finally excreted in urine within a very few days. Um, exposure dose in Taiwanese has been uh, very high and higher than that in many other countries, but it has been decreased after um, uh, the phthalate food scandal in 2011, just as many uh, previous speakers told us. Uh, the big issues concerns about the phthalate, uh, uh, the, the adverse effect of phthalate is about its hormone interruption effect. Uh, according to previous literatures, um, phthalate can affect, can suppress the steroidal genesis and antagonize androgen synthesis and has a estrogenic effect in early pregnancy. Um, According to animal study and more and more epidemiological studies, um, we know, uh, it is believed that developing fetus, infants, and children may be more vulnerable than uh, adults. Uh, however, the uh, findings regarding the effect of phthalate exposure in utero on sex hormone in male and female neonates are mixed. Uh, for example, uh, we, we might ask whether the effect is more pronounced in male neonates or, or in female neonates, or um, is there a specific relationship between certain kind of phthalates and the related sex hormones? Uh, the findings in literature has been mixed. So uh, uh, our, the study ob object of our study is to examine whether and to what extent of maternal exposure to phthalate during pregnancy is associated with the sex hormone levels in male and female neonates, respectively. Um, uh, th this graph has been introduced by uh, Professor uh, Wu, and I'll skip this slide. Okay, so the teenage study, uh, our study is based on the teenage study, is a core study. It is conducted uh, in 2012. Um, the participants uh, were recruited by May 2015. The participants were pregnant women. Uh, in their third trimesters, uh, we have collected maternal information. Uh, includes a comprehensive questionnaire, uh, one spot urine, which is uh, subsequently uh, for the measurement of phthalate metabolites and anthropometry measures. Uh, during their delivery, uh, cold blood samples were drawn and uh, sex hormones were measured. Uh, only the uh, maternal neonatal pairs with that information of sex hormone and phthalate metabolites were included in this study. After exclusion for incomplete data, and, and four smoking mothers, uh, there, there were a total of 519 maternal neonatal pairs enters our data analysis. Um, the exposure in this study is 9 phthalate metabolites level. 
in material urine and um, MTHP was estimated by related five metabolites. Uh, so there is total of ten uh, fellow me metabolites in our study. Um, the level of fellow metabolites were determined by using us in mass mass and has been uh, adjusted by your recreating. Uh, before data analysis, we choose to categorize the fellow metabolite level into turn hives. Uh, since we, we cannot sure the relationship between fellow metabolites and the sex hormone is monotonic relationship. The outcome variable are, were six sex hormones in core blood. That, that is progesterone, luteinizing hormones, follicle stimulating hormones, total testosterone, estradiol, and insulin like growth factors. Um, before, uh, uh, they were, uh, they were log transformed first and treated as a dependent variable in linear regression analysis. Uh, we performed stratified analysis by child six, and potential confounding factors were adjusted in multiple variable regression analysis. Uh, this slide shows the um, median concentration and interquartile range of total 10 phthalate metabolites uh, in mothers with female and male, neo uh, and male neonates. Uh, the concentration between two groups are almost uh, identical. But the levels of sex hormones differs. Um, males, the male neonates have higher levels of FSH and LH, and lower levels of IGF. Um, our uh, study participants, most of them, are age, uh, were aged uh, 25 to 34 years old, and living in a very uh, sedentary lifestyle. And most of them uh, completed the education of college and above. Um, six, uh, around 60% of them were heavier second priorities. And the number of uh, female and male neonates are uh, quite equivalent. The median uh, material weight gain is 9 kilogram, and the median neonatal body weight is a few more than 3,000 grams. That is very identical to general population of pregnant women. We first uh, examined the relationship between the uh, aforementioned basic characteristics and uh, uh, the relationship between the basic characteristic and the outcome variable, that is the sex hormones. And also, we examine the relationship between best characteristics between, uh, and uh, uh, phthalate uh, metabolites. Okay, subsequently, we uh, regress each of the um, sex hormones on each of the phthalate metabolites. Um, after adjustment for Maternal information includes age, education levels, physical activity, parity, and maternal weight gains. Um, regression, adjusted regression coefficients were estimated. Uh, I plotted the regression coefficients for 10 separate models together for ease to visualize browsing and comparison. Uh, so we for example, in uh, uh, progesterone, the level of progesterone in male neonates was uh, positively associated with uh, the level of MMP and negatively associated with any HHP, any OHP, and any CPP. Um, uh, the bars grows, uh, goes upwards represents a positive correlation and the bars uh, goes up downwards represents a, a negative difference. But only uh, orange bars reaches the statistical significance level. 
So in male neonates, uh, in addition to progesterone, we can find that the level of S FSH is negatively associated with MEP, MMPP, MEHHP, and MEOHP, and DHP. Uh, however, none of the phthalate metabolites was associated with the levels of LH and estradiol and uh, uh, total testosterone. But increased level of MEP was associated with increased levels of IGF. Um, in female neonates, we can find that the levels of progesterone is positively associated with MNBP, and the levels of FSH was positively associated with MEP and negatively associated with MEHHP. Again, none of the metabolites was associated with the level of LH, estradiol, and IGF. Uh, but increased level of MNBP was associated with the levels of total testosterone. In summary, so in male neonates, the decreased progesterone cortula was associated with increased level of MEHHP, MEOHP, MECBP, and decreased level of MP maternal urine. Decreased levels of FSH in cold blood was associated with Increased level of MEP, MMBP, MEHHP, MEOHP, and DHP maternal urine. Uh, but in female neonates, uh, increased levels of progesterone and testosterone in cold blood was associated with the increased level of MMBP in maternal urine, and decreased FSH level in blood, cold blood was associated with increased level of MEHHP and decreased level of MEP in maternal urine. So we concluded that the level of core blood sex hormone, mainly progesterone and FSH, were associated with maternal phthalate exposure. The association between the phthalate metabolites and sex hormone in core blood uh, tends to be more pronounced in male than in female neonates. This conclusion is aligned with the findings in animal studies and some of human epidemiological studies. Uh, that's all my presentation. Thanks for your attention.